Do you want to see a world like this? Full of wonders and magnificence, that's what I can describe about it. After the success of Jurassic Park movies, or more recently, the world of dinosaurs. Many have dreamt of the prospect of beholding giant creatures from prehistoric times, roam the earth once again. Reviving dinosaurs into reality is an extremely challenging task. If not nearly impossible, however, with prehistoric animal fossils dating far back from our time, the idea of bringing them back, though fascinating, remains largely impractical. Bringing back species that have been extinct for thousands of years is entirely possible, however, it's not as simple as it sounds. There are many issues to address. If we truly want to revive an extinct species, how would we bring a long-gone species back to reality, if successful? What would we gain and what would we lose, or worse? What would happen if things spiral out of control today? I'll show you whether restoring a magnificent prehistoric world is a wise decision. You are watching the video about the resurrection of prehistoric animals. The idea of bringing back extinct species to the real world has been discussed for many years. You can see that the Jurassic Park series always has sky-high revenue due to the attraction of these giant reptiles. However, the idea of reviving an extinct species only becomes truly feasible when we have made significant advancements in paleontology. During archaeological excavations, what have we found? Nearly perfectly preserved frozen specimens mainly discovered in the coldest regions of the Earth. As global warming is accelerating, the melting of ice, humans are starting to panic because they can't cope with climate change. However, the warming of the Earth opens up a thousand-year opportunity for paleontologists. Prehistoric creatures buried under eternal ice are gradually revealed after many years. It's hard to imagine the significance of this discovery in the past. We could only rely on fossils and remnants of ancient creatures to infer their shape, biological characteristics, or environmental landscapes thousands of years ago. But now, through the discovery of prehistoric animal corpses, we can see, touch, and feel what was previously only in books. These specimens are amazingly well-preserved largely due to the low temperatures and perpetual ice conditions in the polar regions. With these specimens, we can accurately determine the age and even individual characteristics of some individuals and most importantly, their original DNA. What we have obtained is a necessary condition to bring an extinct species back to the world. But what will we gain from this? Are we wasting genetic engineering technology, cloning, gene conservation technology, or even financial resources to realize such an idea? This has been a question debated for many years. Especially when Australian scientists announced a plan to resurrect Tasmanian tigers. Not only science enthusiasts, but even research scientists have doubts about the necessity of resurrecting prehistoric animals. Supporters of the anti-extinction movement say that besides the wonder of resurrection, advanced science gives us the opportunity to correct some mistakes made in the past by resurrecting species that have been hunted to extinction by humans. Once resurrected, these creatures will help restore balance in our ecosystem. We must admit that the technologies being developed to revive extinct or endangered species are bringing great progress in technology and scientific processes. It includes the advancement of environmental regeneration technology. Yes, progress always comes from difficulties and challenges. Not only that, but resurrected species can also support conservation projects by acting as flagship species to generate public interest and funding for the preservation of entire ecosystems. If resurrecting species is prioritized, it will play an important role in promoting awareness, enhancing current conservation strategies. And there is one more important thing. 
we will have the opportunity to witness the most authentic history of natural development. No longer just knowledge from books. History is right in front of human eyes, however, everything has its two sides. Although it may feel very exciting to be able to walk with dinosaurs or mammoths, we also need to know that resurrecting them will have many negative impacts on the present world. Through the study of fossils, fossil records, and living animals, we can determine the main characteristics such as species, body shape, and behavioral habits of prehistoric animals. As mentioned previously, based on these research findings, the threat level of prehistoric creatures can be divided into several aspects. First is the difference in size and strength. Some prehistoric creatures were enormous in size with extraordinary strength, surpassing entirely creatures existing today, such as dinosaurs or megalodon sharks faced with these large and powerful creatures. Human weaponry would likely be significantly inferior, therefore. Many express concerns about our ability to combat such prehistoric creatures. So imagine how you would catch an escaped Tyrannosaurus Rex or if there was a way to stop a mammoth. Additionally, the number of people at risk if these creatures were to escape is a significant concern. Secondly, concerning environmental adaptation and reproductive capability. This is also an extremely worrisome issue. Many prehistoric creatures could adapt and reproduce beyond human control. If given suitable environments, the robust survival and rapid reproduction of dinosaurs made them the rulers of the earth in their time. Therefore, if prehistoric creatures were to return to the present world, they could likely adapt to the environment and reproduce in large numbers, thus re-establishing their dominance. This scenario is akin to a death sentence for the natural environment and potentially even human habitats. However, on the flip side, it's possible that resurrected species may not adapt well to modern environments and could quickly face extinction again. Finally, the hunting habits of prehistoric creatures are also a cause for concern in prehistoric times. Carnivorous animals' size and hunting ability were incredibly formidable. The food sources available from modern-day creatures may not satisfy their enormous appetites. Even the existing predator species dominating today's food chains could become prey for these returning predators, thus disrupting the natural balance and leading to ecological catastrophe. In addition to the mentioned factors, the resurrection of extinct species is an extremely costly process. Bringing back a species could cost tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars. The question rises, where would the funding come from and how could it be recouped? Should we invest such enormous amounts of money in resurrecting extinct animals rather than conserving currently endangered species? In conclusion, the idea of resurrecting prehistoric animals has been criticized as an act against the natural order. Whether it's beneficial or not depends on the species, the purpose of reintroducing them, and our ability to control them. Assuming we could control all adverse factors and avoid going too far, how would we go about resurrecting extinct species? Our scientific capabilities may be sufficient, or perhaps we need to consider alternative methods. One such method that has been discussed when it comes to resurrecting extinct animals is cloning. Cloning has been proposed as a potential method to revive an extinct species in the near future. It can be achieved by extracting the genetic nucleus from a preserved cell of the extinct species, which is then transplanted into an empty egg cell. The egg cell is taken from the closest living relative of the extinct species. It's important to note that this method can only be used if preserved cells are available, making it least feasible for recently extinct species rather than those extinct long ago. Cloning has been researched and utilized in science since as early as the 1950s, one of the most 
Well-known cloning cases is that of Dolly the Sheep, born in 1996. She lived a normal life until she experienced health complications and passed away prematurely using a similar technological process employed with Dolly. Scientists successfully cloned a Pyrian Ibex in 2003. They cultivated tissue taken from the last living female Pyrian Ibex named Celia. The egg cell was taken from another goat and then emptied of its genetic material. The nucleus from Celia's tissue was inserted into the empty egg cell, which was then implanted into a surrogate mother to develop. On July 30th, 2003, a Pyrian Ibex named SK was born. This was the first time in human history that mankind was able to help revive an extinct animal species. However, this achievement was short-lived. As soon as they held the animal in their hands, they realized it was suffering from respiratory distress. Despite their efforts with oxygen and special medications, it could not breathe normally. And within 7 or 10 minutes, it died. This is a sincere account from the scientists involved in the project. Over time, the project's funding dried up, forcing it to cease operations in regret. The Pananabex mountain goat is officially extinct. Once again, it's truly disheartening when they become the first and only species on our planet until now, resurrecting a creature only to give it an additional 10 minutes of life serves little purpose. It's also contrary to our desired outcome. Our goal is to reintroduce them into a healthy world where they can thrive and develop. Furthermore, many of the prehistoric creatures we aim to resurrect have been extinct for countless years, making it impossible to have preserved cell samples for cloning. A second option we could explore is gene editing. In closely related species, Editing genes would play a role in the resurrection process. Stem cells could be directly edited to produce eggs and sperm, created by living species, resulting in offspring of the extinct species. As long as they have close relatives, this would lead to hybrids between the two species, carrying characteristics of both. We could also utilize genetic material from highly degraded fossils and combine it with living relatives to create new species. However, as the genetic material of ancient species degrades further, reconstructing the genome becomes increasingly challenging. Therefore, resurrecting dinosaurs using this method may remain theoretical. Finally, we might consider hybridization as a means to resurrect extinct species. Hybridization is a form of breeding opposite to selective breeding for a specific trait. This method can recreate traits of an extinct species through reverse hybridization, producing characteristics similar to ancestors while having different genes from the original species. Each of these methods provides a clear foundation for resurrecting extinct animals, however, the suitability of each method depends on the species and how far removed they are from our time. For example, mammoths are a species we are close to resurrecting. Thanks to valuable discoveries of fossils and preserved specimens, we have successfully reconstructed mammoth genomes. After addressing genetic engineering technicalities, scientists may implant mammoth embryo cells into a present-day Asian elephant. The mammoth embryo may take up to 22 months to develop, and if successful, a mammoth specimen will be born by using these techniques. We have identified significant genetic changes that allowed mammoths to survive in Ice Age. Conditions These genes, such as long hair, small ears, and thick subcutaneous fat, are incorporated into the Asian elephant genome to create a new mammoth-like species. Although this mammoth breed is not naturally born, it exhibits all the characteristics and ecological functions of the original mammoth. The immediate goal is to create a cold-resistant hybrid elephant that resembles the mammoth and can withstand temperatures of minus 40 C, just like the Ice Age mammoth. However, you might wonder why we chose mammoths as the experimental species. The answer is quite simple. We understand mammoths more than other prehistoric creatures. 
Mammoths are the species humans know the most about through. Fossils! For instance, we know about them as if they never went extinct. Such as determining mammoth lifespan by the number of growth rings in their tusks. Similar to aging trees through tree rings, mammoths in prehistoric human life is crucial. From providing food to using bones for building, I am excited about the prospect of resurrecting mammoths and witnessing it firsthand. This time, we surely won't hunt them to extinction. As some sources suggest, resurrecting an extinct creature from so long ago raises numerous questions about ethics and the purpose of resurrection. Nonetheless, resurrecting extinct species is also crucial for the battle against climate change. You should know that! Grasslands are the best carbon-absorbing areas. Additionally, they help prolong snow and winter. Reducing summer melting, ultimately reducing carbon emissions. This is the story of mammoths, a creature that lived tens of thousands of years ago, as for a Species that lived 65 million years ago, like dinosaurs. Why do we always feel curious about prehistoric dinosaurs? And hope that one day humanity can resurrect them? With the technology and modern science of the 21st century, this is entirely possible. The question is simply how to extract dinosaur DNA and develop their embryos in the laboratory, continuing the story in Jurassic Park. Dinosaurs will indeed be resurrected using a similar method. In the movie, scientists extracted dinosaur DNA from a mosquito that sucked dinosaur blood and was preserved in amber through mass cloning of dinosaurs, and the entire island transformed into their world. Perhaps you'll be disappointed to hear this information. In reality, DNA cannot be preserved for such a long time even when protected by perfect amber layers. From the moment an organism dies, its DNA will gradually degrade. A new scientific study shows that the half-life of DNA is 521 years. Half of the chemical bonds in DNA will gradually break over the following years. So, when it comes to DNA preservation, even if it's perfectly preserved in amber, it will inevitably degrade. It's worth noting that the oldest DNA fragment discovered by humans also has a lifespan 700,000 years ago. Therefore, extracting the genes of dinosaurs from 65 million years ago is truly an unimaginable feat. Even with advances in scientific and technological knowledge, we cannot extract something that no longer exists. So is there no way to resurrect dinosaurs? Actually, we do not want to give up so easily. There is still another way, and surprisingly, it comes from this small creature that has been around for some time. People have always had a deep impression of dinosaurs and thought of them as ancient reptiles due to their massive size. Perhaps this is because their name, dinosaur, is derived from the Greek words deinos and soros, meaning terrible lizard. However, as science delved deeper, we learned that modern birds are the direct descendants of dinosaurs. The mass extinction event during the Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago, caused the extinction of most dinosaur species. Large dinosaur species such as T-Rex, Diplodocus, or Mosasaurus did not escape extinction. However, a small theropod dinosaur species survived and miraculously over in other words dinosaurs were not completely extinct over time they evolved to become smaller lighter and developed wings eventually they became modern birds including chickens or ostriches since the 19th century there have been proposals suggesting that birds are descendants of dinosaurs after many centuries of development the paleontological community has enough evidence to prove that birds are the direct descendants. Of dinosaurs, this evidence comes from bone structure, reproductive systems, as well as a large number of fossils. Especially in the early 21st century, paleontologists found protein in the T-Rex's fossilized bone tissue. Tyrannosaurus is the closest species to birds, so 
In a sense, even if ancient dinosaurs are not resurrected, we still have the descendants of dinosaur species living around us every day. Of course, some may disagree with this concept, however, it is not entirely wrong when we look at the facts. After many years of evolution, many characteristics of dinosaurs that we are familiar with have been lost in the evolutionary history of bird species. Additionally, modern birds are much smaller and more delicate than their ancestors. Therefore, we cannot compare them to the tall, fierce dinosaurs. In the process of dinosaur evolution, their genes gradually changed and eventually became modern bird species. However, they were not completely lost, but rather hidden somewhere inside. Even after 65 million years, the DNA of bird species can still be considered a copy of ancient dinosaur DNA. This is the basis for scientists to have hope in resurrecting dinosaurs by modifying the genes of modern birds. One day, we may be able to turn chickens into large, fierce dinosaurs through genetic modification in the laboratory. This sounds crazy. Imagine if KFC no longer used chicken meat as their main ingredient, and this man's dream became a reality. His name is Jack Horner. He wants to genetically modify chickens in the lab to turn them into large, fierce dinosaurs as we know them. Horner himself is a researcher who has studied dinosaurs extensively and has been hired as a scientific consultant for the Jurassic World movie since childhood. This scientist has had to wishes to become a paleontologist and to resurrect ancient dinosaurs. Now that his first wish has been fulfilled, all that remains is to focus on resurrecting these prehistoric monsters. Horner confidently states that Creating dinosaurs now is only a matter of time because we have the DNA of these creatures in the bodies of chicken species. What he is doing now is trying to determine the evolutionary path from dinosaurs to other species, specifically bird species and from there to reverse the process. Although this method may sound absurd, it is much more reliable than finding dinosaur DNA from mosquitoes trapped in amber in nature. We also have a phenomenon called reverse evolution. Known as atavism, here it means the ancestor, not the habitat. It's primitive. The essence of atavism is described as a genetic anomaly in which organisms sometimes manifest certain anatomical characteristics of their ancestors. For example, some mammalian individuals underwater, such as whales or dolphins, have fins similar to legs, unlike their peers. Even humans sometimes have some characteristics of primitive people, such as excessive hair growth all over the body, known as werewolf syndrome. This phenomenon is a sign of the degeneration of tissues and hair of human ancestors. The process of evolution will encapsulate the characteristics of ancestors and genes like memories. But these memories are not completely lost, they are just no longer expressed outwardly. Although the phenomenon of atavism in nature is an extremely slow and uncontrollable degradation process, as long as we can use artificial genetic technology to search for and modify some genetic predispositions on them, some animals can quickly degenerate and take the form of ancestors. Another scientific basis is that as early as the late 1970s, biologists discovered why fruit flies only developed one pair of wings. They adjusted the genes and caused them to grow an extra pair of wings to resemble the ancestral form better. This technique is called reverse genetics, meaning that genes are designed in the reverse direction of evolution Currently, Henner's team has mastered the mechanism of controlling the development of different parts of chicken embryos. This will help accurately control the abnormal development of chicken embryos. In 2015, they created a chicken embryo with the mouth of a dinosaur. In 2016, they successfully expanded the chicken's leg bones to show dinosaur-like characteristics, such as the raptor species. These features were all lost due to the evolutionary process from dinosaurs to modern birds. 
However, up to now, Jack Horner and his team have only focused on genetic manipulation in chicken embryos. In other words, it inhibits the expression of genes that affect some original proteins. Thus, they achieve the desired effect of controlling the abnormal development of chicken embryos. But the chicken itself remained unchanged. Jack Horner named his creation Dino Chicken. Although possessing characteristics of some dinosaur species, they are still completely chickens, and Jack Horner has no plans to hatch dinosaur embryos. So, in the imagination, during reverse evolution, the chicken's pair will lose the wings and the mouth, and the beak will. Replace the jaw, and we will be able to resurrect complete dinosaurs. Currently, this method is being implemented in laboratory settings, theoretically. Resurrecting dinosaurs using this method is entirely feasible, besides dinosaurs. Scientists are also attempting to resurrect some species closer to us, however. There have been no promising results so far. Whether the outcome of resurrected creatures will lead to a second extinction event, like the case of the Pyrian Ibex or contribute to the creation of a new ecosystem, remains uncertain regardless of the outcome. The most important issue is always control. We must know what we truly want. Resurrecting dinosaurs mammoths or any other ancient creatures may seem normal as long as we ensure they cannot reproduce, escape their environment, or disrupt the food chain in other areas. What do you think if given the opportunity to see real dinosaurs? We could further discuss the issue of resurrecting prehistoric animals right here. In the comments section of this video, thank you very much for your interest and support. See you in the next videos.